Ever since I first saw Kodak Aerochrome, I've always been interested in color infrared film. I went out and tried to replicate the Kodak Aerochrome look without having spent an arm and leg on it some expired film. What that led me to was trichrome photography. Trichrome photography is when you take three black and white photos with three separate color filters and then layer them upon each other to make one color image. So technically you can trichrome infrared film with an infrared filter to make a trichrome infrared photo. The process of making a trichrome infrared photo is pretty long and tedious. You're having to set up on a tripod, you're having to do long exposures, and you're having to switch filters in between each shot. The other issue is you have to meter each scene appropriately and adjust for each filter factor. When it comes to trichrome infrared photography, there's two things you need to remember. First thing being, you need a film that's sensitive to infrared light. Not all black and white films are sensitive to infrared light. The two film stocks I used in this video were Ilford's SFX200 and Rolly's Infrared 400. The second thing you need to know is that you need to replace your red filter with an infrared filter. The main difference between an infrared filter and a red filter is the infrared filter allows only infrared light to pass through it. This filter is almost equivalent to 10 to 12 stops of light. With all that knowledge in hand, I went out to Titlow Park in Tacoma and began shooting. I start off the day pretty lightheartedly, taking photos, trying to get the exposures correctly, but as the day progressed, carrying the gear, changing the filters, and trying to nail exposure really weighed down on me. Usually I can go for a couple hours taking photos and stuff like that, but this was, uh, this was a pretty harsh day. The next day I was off of work, so I decided to head off to Mount Rainier. With this pursuit of trying to do infrared trichrome photography still at the core of my uh, thought process, I ran off to the mountain. Once on the mountain, I was gung-ho to try to nail some exposures, get some really decent infrared photography done, and I was just really excited to just be back out on the mountain since it had been a couple weeks. That being said, I didn't take too many B-roll shots, I was just kind of more intrigued in trying to get the photos done. Also at the same point, I only had one tripod with me, so basically I could either do the photos or I'd be taking B-roll, so sorry about this in advance, there's not much footage of me taking photos, but I promise you, I was there and I did take photos, and here's the results.
After my day spent trying to do trichrome photography up on the mountain, I decided it was best to head home. I was pretty burnt out and spent at this time, like I was ready for a break. Little did I know would that break last two weeks. I didn't intend for this to be a two week break, but I was really just kind of like burnt out on the whole project. The project seemed more interesting at first and I was really kind of really having a lot of fun at first with it. But after two days of consecutively being locked down to a tripod and really having to second guess everything I'm doing, I was kind of over the project to say the least. So I came back after two weeks and I kind of wanted to finish up these rolls, but I didn't really want to make a pilgrimage to try to finish up these shots. I stayed around my house in Port Orchard and just kind of took some photos. I started off in the woods and I kind of wandered around there for a good bit of time, but I didn't really feel connected or drawn to anything. So I only made one photo out here. After getting out of the woods, I decided to get in the car and just try to drive around and find some places to shoot. Uh, I went around the waterfront, I checked a couple different places out, I kind of just shot a couple photos here and there just trying to finish up the rolls I had in both cameras, but I think these are probably my weakest of the photos I've taken while on this little project. So at the end of the day, I have to say, if you're interested in the color infrared look and you want to give it a whirl yourself, I think doing the trichrome process is actually better off for you. With the money you can spend on one roll of Kodak Area Chrome that may or may not turn out, you can spend that money to buy the filters and buy a tripod. Yes, it is time consuming, and yes, you do burn film up pretty quick. With a roll of 35mm, if you have 36 exposures, you're going to only have 12 photos, and for a roll of 120 format and you're shooting on 6x6, you're only going to have 4 images. Like, you go through film pretty quick doing this process, and if you don't nail each exposure, or you kind of mess up that's going to also eat into your photos because you have to restart from the beginning or reshoot that photo it's not every day you can take something head on and come back with results that are pretty solid i think that's actually a really good learning process and a learning curve we all have to start somewhere so basically to have a starting point that's actually pretty accurate and you actually have a representation of an image that does represent the look you're going for i say if i ace this but i think there's something there that i need to work on to kind of get this to be a little more more my aesthetic or my style but again the great thing about trichrome infrared photography is I have all the gear to go back out and do this again Yeah, it didn't do that when I did it. All you gotta do is tap this button here, nothing okay. else. Okay.